stirring the coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, coffee. <sighs> so perfect every time. Every time. When I do it this certain way and use the vortex method, it is perfect. These are um, beans. Now, this is my second cup of these kind of beans here. Hold on a second. Let me take this microphone off. I'll be right back. This is Legends of the Tabletop Legendary Brew. I'm going to put a link for it down below and a promo code will you get where you will get 10% off and there's free shipping. I cut the hair of a gentleman who was a follower on Twitter and he and a partner started a coffee company and they are gamers and they are part of the, uh, if you saw me mention the YouTube channel called Masculine Geek. It's those guys. And they have this coffee that they have roasted to their specifications. And he brought me some this past Saturday. This is my second cup with this. It's absolutely incredible. I've made it for people already and they're like, wow. I'll put a link for it down below called Legends of the Tabletop. Now, I'm not a gamer. I don't know, I do not know Dungeons and Dragons, I don't know games, I don't know Warcraft, I don't know all these things. But I do know good coffee when I taste it and when I smell it. And from the second that I opened it up, mm, and this was better than anything that I had in the past couple weeks. So I just want to let you know that. Link for it will be down below. I'll put that right here, you might like it. And you might, obviously, You'll like the label on it as well. Uh, you gamer guys and what is it, reality play guys and all that. I don't want to say it's not my thing. I just don't understand it. I don't understand it. So maybe somebody can enlighten me some sometime. Check it out. Get yourself a, uh, a bag of coffee from uh, Legends of the Tabletop, the legendary brew. I'll give you my first impression of this here. I'm getting caramel, a little bit of chocolate. Not acidic at all, zero acid. This was put in the French press for uh, four to five minutes, steeped for four to five minutes and then plunged down And I get this nice coffee, a, a earthy richiness, not as uh, earthy as the Ethiopian that I usually roast for myself. This is wonderful. Caramel, chocolate, uh, no acid, smooth, almost as if, almost as if it's... Um, like buttery smooth. It goes down really, really nice. What an absolute pleasure. What an, this just completely made my day. Give it a shot, you like it. Remember, all I'm offering you is truth, nothing more. Morpheus. We make men without chest and expect of them virtue and enterprise. We laugh at honor and are shocked to find traitors in our midst. We castrate and bid the geldings to be fruitful. 
That's from C.S. Lewis, my favorite author. You can't go wrong by reading anything by C.S. Lewis. Well, I'm not religious. You can't go wrong by reading anything from C.S. Lewis. In other words, we put men down. We make men without chests. We tell men to do feminine things. It's okay to wear pink. It's okay to do girly things. And then we expect of them virtue and enterprise when they can't rise to the occasion. We laugh at honor and are shocked to find traitors in our midst because you've been raising non-men. That's why. We castrate, we castrate them. We castrate them and then and bid the geldings to be fruitful. You can't castrate somebody, take away their means of reproduction, and then expect them to reproduce. And that's what we're doing with men in today's society. Look at men in commercials. They're just wimpy little pussies. Let's get friggin' real about it. Look at the husbands in every commercial, like a really half-ass bearded pussy with a woman with her arms folded. There is a war on men, and it's calculated to hit peak war on men by 2020. Watch me. Watch. See if I'm right. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. There is a war on masculinity. Let there be a war on macho, but not a war on masculinity. Masculinity is toxic, isn't it? Men are bad. They're aggressive and violent and domineering and patriarchal until we got to put our bodies around you to shield you from friggin' bullets at Mandalay Bay. Until a bridge has to be built, until a house has to be built, until a house has to be defended that masculinity is toxic, but I need you to protect me when shit gets real. I'm getting real here first thing on a Monday morning. Let's carry on. <laughs> Never ask a 55-year-old woman, when are you due? That's probably not a good idea. Ladies, stop signaling and pimping out your handsome son and beautiful daughter. We get it. You had a handsome husband. Show me your ugly kids if you want to keep it real. If eyes are the window to the soul, then your soul must be a psych ward. Ladies, regarding the lounge chair, beach, leg, pics, pictures. You probably shouldn't show your feet if they look like they're going to swoop down and catch dinner. Feet are a deal breaker for me. I don't know about you. Everything could be great, but if I see some claws down there, <laughs> mm-mm. She can't meet you today, but can on Wednesday from 2 to 3. Why? Because it's not your turn, bro. True desire cannot be negotiated, so move on. She needs to let you know from the get that rules get broken for you. Otherwise, it's nothing more than a job interview, bro. I was binging this weekend on the Masculine Geek podcast on YouTube. I'll put a link for it down below as well. I think you'll enjoy it. Give a little shout out to those guys. Come back when you are the best version of yourself and we can have an honest interchange like men instead of having a dick swinging contest. That's how men should deal with things amongst themselves. Sometimes the best questions, sometimes the best answers are great questions. Learn how to ask great questions. If she's not willing to break the rules for you, move on. Next. 
Say that in your dating profiles, guys. She needs to break the rules for you, not make rules for you. Move on. Haters need elevator shoes. Paula from Alaska. If you care what other men think of you, you still have work to do. The Masculine Geek Podcast. Every time you disappoint a woman, it's a 30-day tracking cookie. Only Amazon associates will understand that. Any time a woman writes that she wants a man who is tolerant, that means only one thing. She's not tolerant. And she just saved you a lot of trouble and money. Send her a thank you note. Your sexual dusk is with many. However, your sexual dawn is best with one. Just my opinion. You can have sex without romance, and you can have romance without sex, but not likely while both parties' sexuality is still alive. Studies from anything that calls itself the Institute for fill-in-the-blank seem to be more credible, yes, but according to the Institute for fill-in-the-blank, and we fall into this trap of assuming the credibility of statements that start with, from the Institute of, research has shown, studies have proven, and you've fallen into that trap because it sounds academic, doesn't it? It sounds important. Bullshit can sound important if it comes from the Institute of Glorified Bullshit. A good haircut and a beard is the vortex method of handsomeness. Me. Why is sex the first thing to go when a couple is having trouble? Why is sleeping on the sofa or a spare bedroom a thing? Why is being in the doghouse a thing? How's your wife doing? I don't know. I'm in the doghouse now. Because romance is the glue that keeps a couple together. Notice I didn't say sex. Romance is the glue that keeps a couple together. Sex is part of that romance. Sex may not always exist, but romance, you can romance your partner until the day you die and be romanced, but you may not have sex to the day you die. If you want it, then you better put a title on it. Me on say. Your married girlfriend cheated on you with her husband on Valentine's Day. His once or twice a year reward. Someday that'll be your cookie. Your girlfriend just got flowers from Jack in service, but she didn't tell you that. Jack in the service department. He's kind of like Kevin in accounting and Dirk in sales. Do you always think about sex? Uh, no. Do you always think about breathing or eating? Well, that's completely different. Well, then why do you give up the function of one organ to reward or punish your man? Well, he doesn't want to all the time. Yeah, not with you. He's tired of earning it. Men who are boyfriends always have more sex than men who are husbands. Hmm, I wonder why. You know how free you are by what questions you are allowed to ask. This is why my journalistic pursuits will never be mainstream 
and I'm happy to be called an alt journalist. Let's read a couple letters real quick. Uh, at the end of 2017, I find myself homeless, living in my car, sleeping in rest areas. I had lost everything after going through a divorce. I had always worked hard my entire life. I was a homeowner in my early 20s. I got married and started having kids. My life was going according to plan. I sense that something is going to take a turn here. Thirteen years later, it all disappeared in what seemed like a second. You, along with a few other content creators, have helped me find myself again and get my life back. I am happy to say that today I have my own house, although just renting it for now. My career is going well, and I am working on bringing out the best version of me that I can. I used to sit in my car in rest areas, watching your videos and focusing on one thing I could do every day that would get me one step closer to being where I wanted to be. Thank you so much for your content. It made the difference in my life. Thank you, sir. Getting better 1% a day. 1% a day. Paula from Alaska talked about that. On January 1st, she did one squat, one sit-up, one crunch, one of whatever her exercises are. January 2nd, she did two. January 3rd, she did three. So how, what are we up to now? 48 days, is it? 38 days? 48 days? Can you imagine by the end of this year, or just pick a number, it might be 100. At the end of 100 days, She'll be doing a hundred squats using body weight. What can you do to improve 1% a day? People get this paralysis of analysis, trying to make quantum leaps with so many YouTube channels about crushing it, grinding, loving what you do, passion. 1% is all you need. 1%. Get 1% better every day or 1% better every week. Think about it. That could be the method that you need. What, what do you need to do to be 1% better or have 1% progress today? For those of you that are having a hard time, what can you do to be 1% better this week? Good morning, George. I hope all is well. You said that 2019 will be the year we get unstuck and magically it's happening. This is from Jack Napier. By adapting the phrase, I started my YouTube channel, made a mailing list, created a Patreon account, had interviews with a couple of the Red Man Group men, started the carnivore diet just last week, and many, many more things. 2020 would be the year I become a millionaire, as you stated in all your, to all your viewers. I'm not even doubting that anymore. Just a quick thank you, sir. Jack Napier. If I can find his link, I'll put it down below. I haven't seen his YouTube channel yet. But knowing the interaction that I've had with this young man, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And here is a letter from a person from Germany. I will not say the name. Writing from Germany. Dear George, a few days ago I started watching your videos. Why I put in a few words about my life situation in YouTube. The first few videos was that dude with the beard. Thanks for the input so far. You helped me a lot. I am married 10 years, two daughters. Me and my wife decided to buy a house a few years ago. Our marriage went really bad and we both agreed to take our time and think about everything. I left Germany for a job in the UK and I see the kids every one to two weeks for a few days. It almost broke my heart. My desire was not more than fixing the marriage, not more than fixing the marriage and be a family again. My wife, who is 35, well, she fell in love with the gardener, who's 55. His 35-year-old wife fell in love with the gardener. I've seen this so many times. This is when I say, Jack, in the service department, 
This is the gardener that visits on Tuesdays. And since then, she started to hate me and ignored me. I'm suffering really bad about this and still hope I can do things to convince her to come back to me. No, there is no coming back. There is no coming back. You do not take back a slut. You do not do that. She's a slut. Move on. You married a slut. One of my best friends told me, it looks like a dog is kicked. It looks like a dog uh, is kicked all the time and he still follows the evil man. I am between suicide or doing really bad things. Since I watched your videos, I try to follow, let it go, and move on. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. An answer to this email would make my day and maybe my life a little bit more clear. Thank you very much. And he gives his name, which I will not reveal. This is disturbing that your wife left you for the gardener. What's more disturbing is your reaction to it. Epictetus said, men are not disturbed by things, but by their opinions about those things. Well, George, how can you be stoic if you have feelings? It's tough. That's the battle. That's the battle right there. But your opinion about leaving you, she was a flawed person. You are not a white knight saving anybody. You are not Captain Save a Ho, Save a Slut. You are not that person. You want her back to save her. No more saving people. 2019 is the year that you don't save anybody. Your life needs to be for you right now becoming the best version of yourself, which you're not right now. I understand that. But you need to be the best version for you, and secondly, for your children. It's important that they have a healthy father. When you fly, you know if the plane loses altitude and the oxygen masks drop, they say, put the mask on yourself first before you help anyone else. The same thing applies right now. You need to get yourself in good shape. You need to let go of the wife. You need to let go of evil plans that you have for the gardener. Life has a way of really dealing with people like that. And I'm not a big karma kind of guy because sometimes people will live their whole life never seeing uh, vindication. So don't hope for vindication in any way, whether it's you hoping that something will happen to them or you making something happen. You can only end up in jail, hurt, and your daughters end up without a father. So don't think, don't do anything stupid. Don't do anything stupid. O, which is the first letter of your name, don't do anything stupid. Do only smart things. So when you first go through a breakup, first, do no harm. Secondly, do only good. It's going to take a while to recover from this. It is. And I know I'm being hard on you right now. But I want your comfort to come from you. And you're going to keep checking the pain to see if it still hurts. You can get through this. First of all, the fact that you wrote this means that you're alive. And guess what? You're alive and you will survive. You're going to make it through this. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But you really need to cool your jets a little bit. Don't deny your emotions. Just delay them. Don't have a free-floating grief and anger throughout your day, which will ruin your day, ruin your career, and create another layer of trouble for you, like an onion, just layer after layer after layer. You don't want to do that to yourself. And that's all I'm going to say right now. Please stay in touch. And I'm going to put a link down below for the 21 Convention Patriarch Edition. If you are a father, want to be a father, or going to be a father within a few months, you need to come to the Patriarch Edition of the 21 Convention. It's May 3rd, 4th, and 5th in Florida. I'll put a link for it down below. If you are having financial issues, privately contact me and I can work on a reduced rate for you. It's three days that will change your life and change your parenting forever. All the books in the world, all the books and all the videos in the world are not going to help you be a better father. 
I wish something like this existed when I was going to become a father and when I was a young father. It's a good thing. You'll benefit from it. The link will be down below. Finish your coffee. Hopefully by the end of the week you'll be enjoying Legends of the Tabletop Legendary Brew. They are not sponsors of the show. I'm giving them a shout out because he is a client of mine. And I'm not talking it up because he gave me a bag of coffee. I'm talking it up because it's good coffee. I think you'll enjoy it. So I'll see you tomorrow. Finish that coffee.